One section of the IGCSE computer science syllabus gets us to look at input and output devices. Um, there are several input and output devices. Uh, you'll find the list of them in the specification or in the uh, syllabus. Um, I'll make several videos that go through the different ones, but not one for each one, otherwise that's too many videos. Uh, therefore, I'll group them together. The ones we're going to look at today are screen types. Okay, so output devices, screens. We're going to look at LCD, LED, and OLED. For each one of these, and for all input and output devices, you need to know the principles of operation, so how they work. You need to be able to give the advantages and disadvantages when compared to each other. And also, if you can give some basic uses. Uh, so, for example, scenario-based uses. So they might give you a scenario in the exam, which is a train station needs uh, some display units that are going to be hung above um, on the platform, which type would you use, etc, etc. You might also have to come up with your own um, scenario for where you would use them. But if you know where these would be used, which is linked in to obviously the advantages and disadvantages, then you're guaranteeing yourself more marks should those questions come up. So we're going to look at LCD, LED, and OLED. All of these screens look like this, basically. Okay, and when you start turning them around and, and looking at different angles, they look different. But in principle, they all look like this: a flat, relatively flat panel. Well, a flat panel. In other words, it's not curved panel, or it can be with OLED, which is a bit confusing. Um, but what I mean is, with old, old um, cathode ray tube screens that you would get in all TVs, they used to be slightly convex. Um, these can be flat, okay? So flat panel displays that look like this with um, different advantages and disadvantages and principles of operation, but basically this is, the, this is the style. Right, LCD. Basically, how LCD works is it's, LCD stands for liquid crystal display. How it works, there's several different sort of layers to how it works and obviously physical layers. Right at the back of an LCD screen, if you've ever looked into the back of one, you might see a long light shining across it. That's because LCD screens are lit or backlit by fluorescent tubes. Sort of the things that you might have in your classroom at school or in a supermarket. Uh, the equivalent of those long um, light bulbs uh, that sometimes have that annoying flicker. They are fluorescent lights. LCD screens have those fluorescent tubes just on a very small scale. They can have several of them. They could have 10 of them. They could have one of them. Uh, but the principle is always the same. They have an LC, uh, they have, sorry, a fluorescent tube that lights them. Okay, how it works is the fluorescent tube shines at the back and it's always on. It's not, it's not dimmed. It's not switched off unless you turn the monitor off. It's always on. In front of those, is a layer of what are called liquid crystals. And the liquid crystal is a material that basically when you apply a voltage to it, it twists, okay? And if it is untwisted and no voltage has been applied to it, then it allows all the light through, okay? Therefore, it would all be white. So these parts here, if this, if you're watching this on an LCD screen, then these parts here will have a slightly untwisted crystals. Um, as soon as you apply a voltage to these, they start twisting and they start morphing into a slightly twisted shape and that blocks the light. It's the same as if you have 3D glasses, okay, and you put two 3D glasses in front of each other and you turn one of them slightly um, on sort of like a pivot, then you will notice that the light starts to get dark and the light gets bright, okay? It's, it's polarization. And in this form here, we use twisted crystals, okay? So, as I said, as you apply a voltage to them, they block light. If you don't apply a voltage, they allow light through them. Um, you don't really need to know that level for the IGCSE, but if you know that twisted crystals are used, then that helps. Uh, but the main thing that you need to know is that they're lit at the back by these fluorescent, fluorescent tubes. Because they have these fluorescent tubes, they are quite thick. Because these fluorescent tubes, they're not tiny. They're a lot smaller than the ones you see in your ceiling, but they're not so small that you can make the TV extremely thin. And therefore, the TV usually has this slightly bulky back on it. Um, however, well, also, if we're talking about disadvantages compared to LED and OLED, they are heavier. And they have a lower resolution than OLED. 
However, they are cheap to manufacture. This is a key word here, okay, manufacture. The reason is that in all of the mark schemes that I've seen, you can't just say cheap because obviously that's relative to the, the store that you go to. They could, if they wanted, sell you an LCD screen for $5,000. However, the price that they've bought it is generally pretty steady and therefore we say cheap to manufacture to get the full mark. Okay, so they are heavy, they are thick, they use these fluorescent tubes at the back, they use twisted crystals to allow light through. Next, we've got LEDs. LED TVs, and they're sometimes called LED LCD TVs because they have exactly the same technology in terms of allowing light through than LCD TVs do. They have twisted crystals that twist or untwist to block or allow light through to, to make the dark or light parts of your uh, screen. If you're wondering how these things make color, basically each one of the pixels will have three filters on it, a red, a green, and a blue. As um, basically these, these little filters can uh, allow different amounts of red, green, or blue through them, but we don't really need to know that at this level at the moment. This exam seems to be more focused on how they create light and the advantages and disadvantages that that creates. Um, so LED, it uses, it's exactly the same principle of operation in terms of how the light is allowed through. It's still got this layer of um, twisted liquid crystals. However, instead of those long fluorescent tubes that you might get in your ceiling, it's got these small light emitting diodes. The good thing about these is Firstly, they are more economical, or ecological at least. Um, they are cheaper to run. So in terms of the amount of electricity that you're going to be paying, they are cheaper than running an LCD screen. They also, um, may, we can make them thinner, the screens, because these things are a lot smaller and a lot more compact than the long tubes that you have in LCD. However, when you compare them to OLED, they are thicker. Okay, so they're more expensive to manufacture than LCD. However, they are cheaper than OLED. They're thinner than LCD, but they're thicker than OLED. So it's like a sliding scale. We have LCD at one end, OLED at the other, and LED in the middle. And they are lower resolution than OLED. But the main thing to get from this is that they use these light emitting diodes instead of long fluorescent tubes, which allows us to make them thinner and lighter than LCD. Finally, at this end, we've got OLED. The reason I've used these two pictures is that it covers two of the points we need to make about it. Firstly, um, the principles of operation, okay? The O in OLED counts, uh, it stands for organic. So you have an organic light emitting diode. What that means is it's a carbon-based LED. So whereas in the previous example, okay, these LEDs are manufactured uh, from several parts, this one is organic. Okay, it's manufactured from an organic substance. What that means is they are extremely tiny. We can, in this example here, this TV would have thousands and thousands of pixels. Yet, as you can tell, we've only got two, four, six, seven times three. So we've only got 24 LEDs in there. On this one, on an OLED, each individual pixel is its own LED. What that means is that we can bend the screen because we're not going to snap something or destroy something by bending the screen slightly because the pixels are so small and the um, the organic LEDs are so small that when we bend the screen we're not actually bending the individual LEDs also each organic LED pixel produces its own light so we don't have to have a backlight the pixels that you see here are actually producing their own light they are extremely ecological they don't cost much money to run however they are very expensive at the moment to manufacture okay this video is 2017 if you're watching this in 10 years time it might be complete rubbish um, and not make any sense at all because technology will have changed but at the moment they're the most expensive to manufacture however we can make them extremely thin and they're extremely light because they don't have this backlight each led produces its own its own light they can also have a very high resolution at the moment, you can go and you can pick up a curved LED 4K screen for a reasonable price. Uh, one final point to mention is that because we've got each pixel producing its own light, we can actually have perfect blacks. What that means is, if you've ever used one of these screens and watched a movie at night time, 
you'll probably notice that when there's a scene in the dark, it's not dark. It's kind of like a, a horrible greyish colour. And that's because we can't completely block the light from coming through all of these areas. Okay. However, in this example here, in OLED, we can completely turn off the pixels. So they're not producing any light anymore. So we can produce perfect blacks. Okay. So that is the difference between LCD, LED, OLED, and just make sure that you know the advantages, disadvantages, and you can give some basic uses of them. In this end here, you might say that a use is somewhere where we don't need a high resolution, somewhere where we're not going to move the TV, the screen around a lot, and therefore it doesn't matter if it's heavy and thick. Here, if we want to save a little bit of money, we've got a cost-effective solution, but it allows us to make it thinner against a wall. We can put it more flush against a wall, okay, than LCD. And also, if we're sort of running in a way that we want to be eco ecological. On this end here, we've got a much larger budget and we need it to be thin. We need it to have an extremely high resolution. And that's what you need to know about that.